So since it's October and Halloween is my favorite holiday, I figured I'd review some scary movies leading up to Halloween. And by scary movies, I mean the only thing that's scary about them is the fact that they actually got made. Now this is one of those movies that falls into the natural horror subgenre. You know, movies where people are being terrified or killed by animals or insects, like spiders, snakes, bats, pretty much any type of living creature you can think of. In the 70s, bees were very popular, mostly because of the killer bee scare that was going on. That turned out to be nothing. But anyways, there are tons of these movies, and this little gem was released in 1972, and it's called Frogs. Now, before I get into this, I'm just going to show you the poster here. And just looking at this, with all the information we're being given here, I would think that most people would assume that this movie is probably about frogs killing people. I mean, there's a hand coming out of the frog's mouth here, and judging by the scale, someone might even go as far as thinking that maybe there's giant frogs in this movie, maybe mutants of some kind that eat people, and I wouldn't fault you for thinking that. I mean, at the very least, you'd think this movie would be about frogs or have a lot of frogs in it. And you'd be wrong about everything, but I'll get to that in a minute. So the movie starts with a photographer named Pickett Smith, played by Sam Elliott, who you might recognize, taking pictures of the swamp and all the different species in it and all the pollution that's going on. Because, you know, the nature needs a reason to get pissed off and kill the humans. Now these rich siblings on a powerboat knock him into the water, probably because Clint here was drinking, which we all know leads to terrible things. Unless, of course, you're not operating a motor vehicle. Then it's okay. Then it's almost always a good time, filled with parties and friends and beautiful people and all this spontaneous stuff that comes out of nowhere. You know, like, like they show in all the beer commercials. Yeah, that's pretty much an average weekend for me. It's a dinosaur! Come on! Hey, Goldfrey, straighten up and fly right. It's your chance for a comeback. Don't blow it. He's a dinosaur! So anyways, the rich kids invite him onto their speedboat to dry off and take him to their family's foggy island for a picnic, where they introduce him to their uncle, who may or may not be a robot. Mr. Smith accepted our offer to stay for lunch. Delightful. I'll tell Maybell. Good. Sounds like a plan. Now, as they walk to the mansion, we keep seeing shots of more and more frogs, basically telling us there's a huge frog presence on this island, which would make sense after all, because, well, the movie's called Frogs. But there's just one problem. These aren't frogs. These are toads. Cane toads, I believe. In fact, throughout the movie, the vast majority of these shots are of toads with just a frog's ribbit dubbed over the image. So anyways, Pickett gets introduced to all of the family members, and there are a lot of them, so I'm not even going to go through and name all of them because it really doesn't matter. Most of them are going to die anyways. What? That's a spoiler? Really? What did you think was going to happen in this movie? The family and the toads all become friends and sing kumbaya for an hour and a half. Now, in most horror movies, you have that first act where you get introduced to the characters and everything should be kind of a build up to when the killing starts happening. But in this movie, it's not so much of a build up as it is just a giant wait. And I mean wait. It's actually the first half of the movie, 45 minutes of really nothing interesting with shots of toads peppered in here and there, almost just to remind you of why you started watching the movie in the first place. And like a lot of horror movies, the phones aren't working. I don't know, maybe the toads cut the line. So Rich Son, number one, goes out to check on them. And this is a part of the movie that I really don't understand. At one point, he slowly gets out of the Jeep, takes aim and shoots at some birds. Now, there is actually a Wikipedia page on this movie that has a fairly detailed summary of the plot, believe it or not. I mean, I'm not complaining. I'm actually thankful for it because it helped me try to understand some of this stuff, but I, I think the person that wrote it still didn't really understand the movie either. It says, Michael Crockett sets out to check on a down telephone line. He discovers that the phone connection is dead, but 
Before he can return home, he finds himself distracted by flocks of aggressive birds. Now, I don't know who wrote this or how they got this information, but the movie doesn't make any of this clear at all. He discovers that the phone connection is dead. How? All he's doing is looking back at the post. I mean, I'm not a telecommunications technician, but is there something wrong here? Because nothing looks out of place to me. And a flock of aggressive birds? How are they aggressive? They haven't done anything. Now he decides to run into the forest. Why? To chase down the birds that are being aggressive? While he's running, he somehow shoots himself in the leg, and while he's on the ground, a bunch of moss starts falling on him from a tree, as well as a bunch of tarantulas, and I just don't understand. I mean, move out of the way. Get up! I, I understand you shot yourself in the leg, but that doesn't make you paralyzed. Just try to roll over and drag yourself if you have to. Don't just sit there like, well, my leg's gone, so, you know, take me, tarantulas. But I guess the spiders are too much for him as they bite him and wrap him up in webbing as he dies. Now, if you thought that was bad, then you have no idea how stupid Rich Son number two is. He goes out to the greenhouse to pick some flowers, and a bunch of lizards follow him inside and start knocking over jars of chemicals. Now, Rich Son number two decides, instead of just running out the door, to walk over and inspect the situation. Yes, get get right in there and hail the fumes. That's always a good idea. I'm sure there's a good chance that whatever gas is being produced here won't kill you and will actually probably make you healthier. Oh no, wait, I'm wrong, he's dead. Meanwhile, the ant is out looking to catch butterflies when something terrible happens. As she's walking along, a bunch of toads block the path. Well, I guess it's too hard to walk around them. So it's better to just start going deep into the forest, where she's met with all different types of snakes, which scare her and lead her even deeper into the forest, until she takes a bath with some leeches, meets up with the rattlesnake again, and she's dead. Now as the uncle is looking for his wife, he runs into some alligators and decides to start wrestling them. And what's interesting here is that it looks like he actually initiates it, and it looks like he's actually doing a pretty good job. I've never wrestled an alligator before, but one would think looking at this, that he's actually winning. But then suddenly he's just dead. But the weirdest deaths are yet to come. Like when the butler, chef, and rich son number two's fiance decide to leave the island. But as soon as they reach land, they're attacked by birds, I guess. This is starting to feel like an Alfred Hitchcock movie, except not, because those are good. Now, as Clint swims back to the boat, he's attacked by water moccasins, and I really don't know what happens here. I mean, he reaches the boat, but then he doesn't climb aboard the boat. He almost waits to get bitten. And then once he's bitten, somehow his hand is just covered in blood, and he just sinks. Water moccasin venom is apparently pretty potent, but... I don't think it can paralyze you instantly. But this one has to be my favorite. As his wife is watching him drown, she gets stuck in some mud, and here we go. She's apparently now killed by a snapping turtle, as represented by a shot of her screaming, shot of the turtle, shot of her screaming again, back to the turtle, rinse and repeat. Now looking back at everything that has happened, just take a look at all the different types of animals that have killed people in this movie. And what have the toads done? Nothing. They, they ruined a cake, that's pretty much it. So the rest of them leave the island on Pickett's canoe, but not before he battles some snakes with an oar and blasts a crocodile with a shotgun. And the old guy is just like, screw it, I'm not leaving my mansion, I don't care how many toads are surrounding it and want to get in and kill me. And look, I think I finally see some frogs in this scene. So the toads finally break into the house and now you think, okay, yeah, here we go. They're finally going to do something. Maybe they're just going to jump all over him and smother him to death or use their, you know, poison and kill him that way or something. Just something to do with the toads that's interesting and doesn't make the title of this movie just completely misleading, which it pretty much already is. But instead, he panics, has a heart attack, and dies. And then the toads and frogs cover him, and that's the movie. So yeah, in the end, the family was killed by tarantulas, lizards, snakes, birds, alligators, turtles, and heart disease.
Now, from a technical standpoint, Frogs actually really isn't that bad. I mean, there's some shots here where it would have been nice if they could have racked the focus, but that's pretty much it. The rest of the movie is pretty well photographed, I think. You know what? I give credit to pretty much any movie that works with a lot of animals because that sucks. It's not easy making a movie where a lot of shots of wildlife are involved. So I think they did a pretty good job considering. So how bad is Frogs? Well, it's bad because most of the movie is just completely boring. Some of the deaths are okay. Most of them are just ridiculous. The title is so misleading, especially the shots of all the toads throughout the movie. You'd think, okay, fine. They're not frogs or toads, whatever. But based on all the shots of the toads getting closer and closer to the house, you think at some point, I don't know, maybe there's going to be this huge army of toads that attacks the house and they're all inside the house trying to survive and, you know, you can throw in the other, you know, animals and reptiles in that too. And But that none of that happens. It's, it's basically people leaving the area and then getting killed by the swamp that surrounds the house. That would actually be a better title for the movie, The Swamp. That would make more sense. The movie tries to build up to something, but then it never happens. You have all these shots of all the toads over and over and over again, and then really has nothing to do with toads. Other than that, it was totally fine watching all the other animals do all the you know killings in the movie. I mean, it's probably better than watching some ridiculous movie about, I don't know, giant killer bunny rabbits or something like that. That's the one you're doing next. I'm doing what next? <laughs>